Welcome to our concluding service for our special week of revival. May the Lord bless you all for coming. Amen. It's our turn to blend our voices, to sing together, and we are taking our first song from Sacred Songs and Solos, hymn number one, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Amen. We're all going to be at the mercy of the organist. He's going to give us one of the common tunes for singing this song. The song in particular has many tunes to it, but it will give us um, a common one that all of us will be able to take. For our internet audience, you are equally warm welcome to our devotional service. May the Lord bless you wherever you may be. Amen. We've been having a week of revival praying after we've had our camp meeting as well as other meetings. We usually have a week to pray together to cap off that special time of summer uh, meeting, which is ending today. Actually, our service this morning is devoted to thanksgiving for all that the Lord has done for us, and we pray that as we shall be praising him here, you will join us wherever you are to praise him, yeah. and all our praises will be acceptable to him yeah. in Jesus' name. Yeah. We're beginning with hymn number one of S7S, and we are taking verses one, three, and four. Verses 1, 3, and 4.
Amen. May the Lord accept our praises. Amen. Let's stand up and have that chorus, that refrain one more time, and then we have congregational prayer. Shall we stand, please? We're going to sing that chorus together. agree with me that the Lord has been gracious and glorious is his holy name and in view of that perhaps we can all raise our voices to give him glory honor and praise for who he is and for what he has done for you and I let's raise our voices together to praise God shall we pray In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' mighty name.
Baburudin is taking from Psalm 150. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Praise God in his sanctuary. Amen. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Amen. Praise him for his mighty acts. Amen. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Amen. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Amen. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Amen. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Amen. Praise him with stringed instruments Amen. and organs. Amen. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Amen. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Amen. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Magnify the Lord with me. Bless the Lamb of Calvary. For his grace so rich and free. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Magnify the Lord with me. Bless the Lamb of Calvary. Jesus gives us liberty, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Glorify the Lord with me. Bless the Lamb of Calvary. For His grace so rich and free, oh, glorify the Lord with me, glorify the Lord with me, bless the Lamb of Calvary, Jesus gives us liberty, oh, glorify the Lord with me. Sing praises to the Lord with me. Bless the Lamb of Calvary. For His grace so rich and free. Sing praises to the Lord with me. Sing praises to the Lord with me. Bless the Lamb of Calvary. Jesus gave us liberty, oh, praises to the Lord with me. Taking our text this morning from the book of Psalm 18. Psalm 18, I read from verse 1. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Amen. The Lord is my rock yes. and my fortress Amen. and my deliverer, Amen. my God, yes. my strength, Amen. in whom I will trust, Amen. my buckler Amen. and the horn of my salvation Amen. and my high tower. Amen. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, yeah. so shall I be saved yeah. from my enemies. Yeah. One of the last um, day signs that we have in the Bible, one of the signs of perilous times, is that men shall become ungrateful. Yeah. Men shall be unthankful. And no doubt, we are currently living in that age of ingratitude attitude. Many people are full of things that the Lord is yet to do. That's why they come to church. While there is nothing wrong in that, we may be missing out on the importance 
of praising God instead. Yes. God is worthy yes. to be praised yes. all the time yes. and every time. It seems to me that many people are losing it. And God can help us change our attitude. Yes. Once you form an attitude, perhaps it's something that the psychologist, the social psychologist will let you know that it's something very difficult to change. But with God's help, Amen. our attitude can be changed. Yes. More especially when it has to do with God. God, I'm guilty of an attitude of ingratitude. And today, I want you to change that attitude for me. And the Lord is able to do that. Amen. This attitude, of course, must begin in a small scale by expressing um, thanks or um, just even saying thank you to our spouse, <laughs> saying thank you to our parents, thank you to our children, thank you to brothers and sisters, thank you to even the government. Or whatever is happening, yeah. we still develop that attitude of saying that it could have been worse anyway. Absolutely. But thank God that it is what it is. Yeah. And as, as a result of that, I'd like to say thank you. Yeah. Perhaps a, a, a kind of a test that you and I can take briefly this morning is just think back. When last did you say thank you to your spouse? When last did you say thank you to your children or to your parents, brothers and sisters, to brothers and sisters, to even our leaders, to those that the Lord has used to be of special blessing to us? They are not asking you to say thank you, but we are talking of an attitude here, yeah. an attitude of giving thanks. No wonder many people have carried over this attitude of ingratitude at home and in every other sphere of life to worshiping God. But um, I, um, I have one, something inside me so solid that God today can help you and I to change this attitude. Amen. It's something common in our church. I love it when I see it and it's usual, it's just common without even any minister telling anyone that will come before us to conduct prayer meeting, we like to first of all begin with thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Knowing that God has just given us that opportunity, yeah. even to come before the Lord to pray at all, yeah. is something special yeah. to which one should be grateful for. Mm -hmm. Even before you go into the uh, 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 spirit of prayer, you just say, thank you, Lord, for making me to be part of this. So briefly this morning, I'd like to say a few words about taking our attitude of praise, thanksgiving, and gratitude to God to a new and a higher altitude. Amen. And the Lord can help us to do that Amen. when we want to say we want to praise God from all our hearts. Amen. Before I go too far into this, let me give you one story that I read. A story of a man who went to church with an angel as his guide. Every seat in that church was filled. We have everybody sitting down, but there was something very strange in that meeting. According to the uh, uh, story, the organist was moving his hands on the keyboard, but no sound. The choir arose to sing. Their lips were moving, but no sound. The congregation joined in the singing. They may be moving their body and everything, but no sound. The pastor got up. To read the Bible, no sound. He later got up to preach the word, no sound. And then the angel, no, this man turned to the angel and asked, Why, what's going on? What is happening? The angel replied, because there is nothing to be heard. Nothing to be heard in all these forms and everything that is going on. Well, there is nothing to be heard. You see this service exactly as God sees it. God is not hearing anything. They are just making sounds. They are making sounds to themselves. Why is that? And as they were talking about this, they just found out that um, one little girl at the back pew, not even in the front, 
our Father who art in heaven, this uh, uh, man that went to the church turned his eye and looked back. Somebody, I can hear his sound from a little girl at the back, our Father who art in heaven. And the angel said, that is the only person that the God is hearing. And do you know why? That little girl is praising God from her heart. That little girl is worshiping from her heart. So is all our worship. So is all our singing. So is all that we are doing. If it is not from our heart, it's just emotion. It's just making movement. I pray Amen. that this morning, Amen. all those songs that we have uh, sung together, Amen. I want to believe and pray that you sang them from your heart. Amen. Otherwise, only your lips are just moving. God is not hearing anything. The way I'm talking here, what well, may be that pastor who got up and saying everything and thinking he's preaching and he's delivering the word of God, but God is not hearing anything. And you may be one of the choir, those lovely, wonderful songs that we've heard, just hearing, maybe melodious to all of us because we are all hearing with human ears, but with God, who is listening to the heart, nothing might have reached him. But by the special grace of God, Amen. our praise Amen. this morning Amen. will be taken to a new height, Amen. a higher altitude, Amen. that heaven will ring, Amen. and God will hear. Amen. God will know. Amen. John is praising me. Amen. Mary is praising me. Amen. Adami is praising me. Amen. Isaac is praising me. Amen. Everyone is praising me. Amen. God can hear that. Amen. If only we will do it from the bottom of our hearts. May we not waste our time today. May we not come in vain. May we praise and worship him from our heart and pray that the Lord will remove every hindrance. Amen. There must be something when someone is singing uh, um, singing with all the emotion and all the, uh, we tell the choir members that when you sing a song of praise, put a smile. We, we too can do that. But you know what? You can put that smile that everybody is looking at, and nothing is going past this ceiling. But we don't want that to happen to us. We can do that from the bottom of our heart. Amen. Of course, we, 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 we let the world have the smile that is coming from our heart, and we can let heaven know about that too. We can combine the two, and the Lord can help us. So let us start our new spiritual year on the right footing to praise God. We have chosen for this uh, exhortation what you may consider to be the second edition of praise and thanksgiving that was expressed by David. The first edition of this song was given in 2 Samuel, the 22nd chapter. If you read that, you will see that it's exactly the same with Psalm 18. So if you like, you can call it the second edition but it's exactly the same thing. We want to use that to stir our heart to develop a higher altitude of gratitude in this age of ingratitude. May God help us. Amen. David started this song by saying that in the Lord, that in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. Have you been delivered from your enemies? Who delivered you? When I talk about enemies, I don't want you to be thinking of Isaac. I don't want you to be thinking of a brother or a sister or even someone outside there. The enemy of our soul, the world, the flesh, and of course, the wicked people that God knows. But God has delivered us. Here we are in September 2018, beginning of our spiritual year. God made us to see the beginning of it the beginning of 2017, and then to see the end of it, and for us to start another one. May his name be praised. Amen. And when he mentions Saul here, as Bible students, we all know what Saul did to, Samuel, I mean, to David. God delivered David from Saul. Our own Saul is the devil, pursuing us day and night. But here we are. Glory be to his name. Amen. You know that uh, uh, verse talks about I will love thee. I will love thee. I will love thee. Amen. An interest in the person loved is the delight of the lover. I will love thee. 
When last did you even tell the Lord that I love you, Lord? From the bottom of your heart. You know we say things like that? Lord, I love you. Thank God we can say that, of course, to our spouse too. From time to time, when you don't even have that attitude, how can you extend it to God anyway? Start in a small way. Start with your children. Start with um, those that the Lord has used for you in one way or the other. Start with your spouse. I love you. It will not be difficult when you kneel down to say, Lord, I love you Amen. with all my heart, Amen. with all my soul, Amen. with all my mind. Amen. We can love the Lord with all our heart. Yeah. We can say the same. Um, uh, David looked as far back as when he said that in the day, in the day that God sent deliverance, how can one forget that day anyway? No. I can never forget the day that I was delivered from my soul the enemy of my soul, the devil that I was serving for a very long time, the one glorious day, God extended his mercy to me. May God help us to appreciate him. May God help us to know the meaning of salvation. For those who have been saved, for those who have been saved, for those who have been delivered from their life of sin, it is not a small thing. It's a great thing. It's a wonderful thing. And we thank God for that. Amen. To have deliverance from the hand of the devil. Yes, the devil. Yes. True. When he has no more dominion over me, over you. Jesus. One should be remembering and praising God every time. For those that have been tossed here and there by the devil, they, they, they will understand that once you are delivered from his hand, it's a great deliverance. Yes. And may he please accept our Amen. thanks and, and praises. We don't want to forget that day. It has been the lot of God's people to have many enemies. And don't worry yourself about that. We are always in imminent danger of falling into the hands of the enemy. But whether we see it or we don't see it, I know. I feel it that deep in my soul that God is working in my behalf. And I know that is your testimony too. Many times God will let us see Many, many, many times. More than the one that we have seen. We didn't see anything at all. Amen. Things that the Lord has delivered us from. Amen. May he please accept our thanks. Amen. May he please accept our praises. Amen. Verses 4 to 6. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the flaws of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. Praise God. This is a situation that uh, uh, David found himself, and he said he prayed to God, and God stepped in. When we pray about our situation, God steps in. We thank him for all the situations that he has stepped in. Amen. For me, in my position, for all the cases and issues that God has made me to be aware of in this church, that I can look back and I can see the hand of God at work, I know it's not a small thing. In your own life too, in your homes, in your workplaces, even in the church. Things that you can say, how did I go over that? How did that which I've been saying tomorrow, how will I be delivered, has now become yesterday? Isn't that wonderful? Yes. You are the one thinking, how will I do tomorrow? And now, where is that tomorrow? It has become yesterday. It has become last week. It has become last year. And here again, here you are. All glory, all honor, all praise be unto God. May we praise him from the bottom of our heart. May God please teach us how to praise him. God can do that for us. Let us think back. Think back till now. If not for God. If not his deliverances. If not his power. Actually, if you read this, um, which of course as Bible student we should know, all that David went through from verse 7 through to uh, 15 spoke about what God did in answer to his prayer. God did something. God went to the foundation of the problem, confronting David. God delivered him from his opposition, from all the obstruction. 
He got to the foundation of it. Look back. Those things that have foundations, that you think that foundation, nothing can shake it. It's like as, as if it will not remove. But now, God has removed them. God has dealt with them. All those strong enemies, the strong attack, the illness, the trials, the temptations. But here you are. Here we are. All glory, all honor, all praise, all majesty be unto the name of our Lord and our God. He is indeed our fortress. He is indeed our high tower. He is indeed our salvation. He is indeed our deliverer. Think about it. Is it because you know how to pray? Is it because you are righteous? Is it because you are holy? Is it because you are so careful in all your work? And that's why today you can do like this. If not for God, all glory be unto his name. He came down. He went to the foundation of our problem. And he solved them. From verse 20 to 42, that part gives a reflection of how God saw uh, David through all the opposition, all the false accusers, all the evil plans against him, and give examples of how God protected him as he trusted God. We too can look back and see what the Lord has done for us. From verse 43 now, I jump to verse 43. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people, and thou hast made me the head of the heathen, a people whom I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. The strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their close places. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God that avengeth me and subdueth the people under me. He delivereth me from my enemies. Yea, thou liftest me up above those that rose up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Amen. People can be violent with their tongue, with their thought, with their summations, with all that is within them against you, against me, but God yeah. rose up. Amen. Especially when God sees your heart. Mm -hmm. Especially when God knows you have not done them any wrong. God will deliver you. Yeah. God will see you through. Yeah. When people are talking, you know, tongue. I was given the opportunity to give a teaching on tongue in this last camp meeting. Tongue. This tongue called little member. The fire that it can kindle that can burn down a whole house, can destroy a relationship that has been on for so many years, a relationship that took so many years to build and is going on fine, just this tongue, just a word. You just say it out like that, and you know once it comes out, yeah, one contribution this morning was that um, even when we have run to the city of refuge, the person that we have offended must forgive. And that is true in the context of teaching forgiveness. But God has a reason for saying that stay there. Yes. Stay there. Don't go out. Because the avenger of blood, the thing is still boiling inside him or her. And if you should show your face like this, it is true you should forgive. But the pain, the hurt, that you've caused him, and God has a formula. He said, when the high priest dies, God knows what he will do about that. You can then come out. Even if you see that person again, is God not the one looking and taking care of all the mechanics of the heart of men? He will deal the heart of that person. No, 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 no. It's time for him to be released. It's time for him to come out. He will make you to forget that thing. He will remove it from your memory. He will take care of it. But if you, you come out at the wrong time against the word of God, God says that the avenger of blood will catch you. The avenger of blood will not catch us. By the grace of God, we will remain. It's, it's, 
there are, there are boundaries, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, many people don't want, they don't want boundaries. And that is part of that lesson, to remain within the boundary. If you remain in that boundary, you are safe. Yeah. You go out of that boundary, you are under the attack of the enemy. We don't have the power to remain in that boundary. Actually, many times it can be relatively restrictive. Let us be honest. You want to jump out like this, you want to do this. When we were treating the lesson, we were talking about just staying in one city. Ah, you are hearing some people are going to the other city, they are going to that city. They are going, you too want to go, yes. but you need to tell yourself, I'm now in the city of refuge. Yes. Uh, if you are in Hebron, that is where yours is, and you're hearing some people going to Samaria, going to Jerusalem, going to Gilgal, going this and that, and you are just hearing about it, don't go out. You can just be hearing about it. Your own city that you are confined to is that. And if you stay there, the Lord will look after you. You will not lose anything. So to some extent, one can say, to be honest, that freedom to just do what you like, how you like, when you like, may not be there. And we thank God for such a city. We thank God for such a gospel that has boundaries for us where we can be saved. And God can keep us there. We can remain there. God can give us satisfaction there. Yeah. Actually, we should praise him because that is what he has been doing for us. Yeah. And may he continue to do that for us. Yeah. Going back to the issue of tongue, we have been delivered yeah. from the tongue of men. Yeah. The kind of things that people have said. The kind of things that the enemy has given people to even say to your face. Things you know you did not say, you did not do, and somebody standing like that, you did it. You said it. You are like this. You are like that. How did you go over that situation if not for God? That point in time, you could have lost your salvation. But what can you do? You just go back. God, you cry. God, deliver me. Have mercy upon me. You know me. You see my heart. God did that for me. God will do that for you. God is doing that for his children. Yeah. For whatever people are saying, our God is there, yeah. ready to deliver. Yeah. David, recognize that. You deliver me from violent men. Some people don't care. They don't care. But here we are. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Honor, majesty Amen. be unto his name. Amen. Here we are still standing, Amen. still under the blood. Still under the grace yes. from our violent men, yes. violent women, violent children, violent spouse, our God is able. Yes. He will continue to deliver us. Yes. We will continue to praise him. Yes. He delivered us from the strivings and the tongues of men. Yes. He made us to overcome all our strangers, the strangers in our body. And note something in this particular psalm. Little appeared of man, but much of God. In all of this, it is God. Yeah. Don't let us forget that. Yeah. Not because you are so, uh, some people are, are very, um, what is the word? Uh, reserved, thank you. They are very reserved. They are not, they are introvert people. And you think they are wonderful people. They are nice people because they don't say anything. And, you know, just gently like that. And they are just doing like that. I said something in Lagos during that teaching. I said that, do you know that the cruelest lies are often told in silence? May God deliver us. Amen. Deliver us from men, Amen. violent men. Amen. God can deliver us. Oh, yeah. It is God. When praises go up, the glory of the Lord will come down. From verse 49. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, yeah. O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. Amen. Great deliverance giveth he to his king, yeah. and showeth mercy to his anointed, Amen. to David. Yeah. We can put our names there. Yeah. To David, and to his seed forevermore. Amen. For all these past blessings, yeah. for all the present, Amen. for all the future victories, we praise God. Yeah. And we don't want to praise him from the lips only. Let, let us remember 
Let us take it from the depth of our heart, what the Lord has done, that we know he is the one that has done it. And as we start this new spiritual year with that praise, in anticipation that we do great things, the Lord will answer our prayers. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. as we praise him, it's going to be our refuge. Yes. It's going to be our fortress. Yes. It's going to be our God. Yes. He will deliver us from the snare of the fowler yes. during this new year that we are starting. Yes. And from the noisome pestilence, yes. he will cover us with his feathers. Yes. Under his wings, we are going to trust. Yes. His truth shall be our shield and buckler. Yes. We will not be afraid of the terror by night, yes. nor for the arrow that flies by day, yes. nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at our right side, ten thousand on our left, and it shall not come near us. Only with our eyes we shall behold and see the reward of the wicked. That is from the Bible. I'm reading from Psalm 91. That is the promise of God when we praise him from the bottom of our heart. If I take from verse 10, there shall no evil before thee, Amen. neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling, Amen. for he shall give his angels Amen. charge over thee Amen. to keep thee in all thy ways. Amen. They shall bear thee up in their hands, Amen. lest thou that dash thy foot against a stone. Amen. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, Amen. the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet, Amen. because he has set his love upon me. Amen. Therefore will I deliver him. Amen. I will set him on high. Because he has known my name, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. I will honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Let's come before him. Give him all the praise. Give him all the honor. God is able. He will deliver us. He will continue to deliver us. Come and express your thanksgiving to God. He will answer our prayer as we sing hymn number 207. Father, we thank you. Thank you for being our Father. Thank you for taking us as we are. Thank you for the heart you have given to us. Oh Lord, we want you to give us the heart of gratitude today. As we go on our knees to pray, help us to remember all those instances which you have delivered us. The God of David, you are our God. Help us to be grateful children today. Send, oh Lord, save souls today. Sanctify souls today. Baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. Oh Lord, heal those that are sick. We thank you because you are able to do it. More than we can ask for, we pray in Jesus' name. 